Now let's go back to where it all began, on the river bank. Tell me something, Robert. How long has man been using this river? Well, approximately 10,000 years, Brian. Uh, Mount Sandwell, just uh, to the south of Corian here, is the oldest known settlement of man in Ireland. And those people used the river, uh, just as we are doing today. Does it ever occur to you as you, you steer your vessel along here that you're, you're actually following a tradition that goes back all that time? I didn't until just now when you mentioned that. <laughs> Now, there are two important sites here at Mount Sandal. Quite recently, a delightful walk has been developed around Mount Sandal Fort, an Anglo-Norman mott, which was possibly once an Irish hill fort. It's well worth a visit, but for us, it's the other site that matters. Where I'm standing is the oldest site, the oldest known site of people's presence in the entire island of Ireland. And yet all we've got to show for it is this tatty field surrounded by a housing estate. Lorraine, tell me what was here. Yeah. It's a truly wonderful site, Brian. I know it doesn't look like much today, but we have to think back 10,000 years ago um, to when hunter-gatherers first settled here in Ireland at, at Mount Sandal. Um, the site was excavated in the 1970s by Professor Peter Woodman and his team. They found very good evidence for hut sites, quite large hut sites, about six metres in diameter, with an internal hearth. Um, the huts would have been sort of like tent-like structures, but quite substantial. Um, they could easily have accommodated about 10 people. So there was presence here for a number of centuries. But there's nothing of that to see here now, of course. So we're fortunate to have the early people's gallery at the Ulster Museum. I mean, one of the main things that survives from Mesolithic sites are actually the flints themselves. Uh, and in the early part of the Mesolithic, they produced tiny flints known as microliths. And these would have been very, very typical of, of, of the microliths and the type of technology that was produced at Mount Sandal. And they were probably used for composite tools. So maybe one part acted maybe as the point of an arrowhead and the other tiny bits of flint would have acted as the barbs. But more than flints have come from the river ban, very often thrown up by dredging and other works to meet the needs of modern development. These locks were built in the 1840s. Uh, tremendous piece of work, all done by hand, no machinery involved in those days. And they still work, they still work in exactly the same way as they did when they were built. And it was seen as a famine relief scheme as well in, in places. And it was to improve communication between Coleraine, Kilray, Toome and all the other towns along the river. And then what happened? The locks were no sooner finished than along came the railways in the 1850s and the railways had the effect of taking all the commercial traffic off the river. In the construction work that went on behind this whole thing, we know there was a huge amount of archaeology exposed. Absolutely. I think unexpectedly, Brian, um, the band disc, as it's called, was recovered a little bit further upstream at Lochan Island, so also recovered dr during dredging operations. Beautiful, beautiful piece of Iron Age art. Small disc, only about 10 centimetres in diameter, but beautifully decorated. Sometimes it's described as compass decoration with these three swirling spirals. So you can imagine, you know, trying to draw it, draw it out first of all with the compass uh, and inside the centre of three of the swirling spirals is a little bird's head. If you look very close, you could see there, uh, there's probably the remains of, of a little, three little loops. So it could have been suspended, so perhaps some very fine scale pan for weighing things. It could have been part perhaps of, you know, stitched into clothing or even it might have been part of an, an elaborate headdress. And this is only one of a host of treasures found in the ban. The question is, were they lost accidentally or was there a deeper significance? Certainly, I mean, rivers would have been very important places in prehistory and early history. They served as routeways, points of communication. They were a source of food. They would have been revered and respected. So yes, they would have been a fitting location for offerings of metalwork, stone and other artifacts.